Okay, what I have here is a Sanyo VTC M05 beta video recorder. Um, I featured this briefly in a previous video. Um, my original intention for this machine was to um, use it for parts to repair one of my other um, Sanyo beta machines which had a few parts missing, but um, if the machine works or is relatively easy to repair, I think it's just a bit too nice to um, um, use it as a scrap machine. Okay, it's a little bit tatty, it's got a few bits of damage here and there on it, but um, I still think it would be a bit of a shame to rip it apart if it's going to be a worker. So I'll give it a try and see how I get on. As it's a Japanese model, it runs on 100 volts AC, and thanks to my dad, I now have a variable transformer, otherwise known as a Variac. Um, that should give me any output voltage I choose on the knob on the top from here. So if I just set that to 100 volts, we should be good to go. So let's get it all hooked up and give it a try. OK, I've now got the Variac set up, connected into this uh, multi-way American power strip here, which the plug from the VCR fits into. That's giving roughly 100 volts. So here we go, 100.2 volts. Yeah, we have clock. Right, let's see if we can set the clock on this thing then. Uh, I think that's clock set. Oh, that's PM, right, so it's about five... Five forty-three ish There we go, clock set. Looking fairly healthy, isn't it? Oh, that looks a bit uh, weird. Right, next job. Put a tape in and uh, see if it actually runs. I'll take the top off before I do that so we can watch what's going on with the mechanism. OK, I've uh, popped the lid off, um, hinged the circuit board out of the way and just taken that screening cover off of the uh, loaded mechanism there. The first tape I'm going to put in is just uh, an empty shell. Um, the reason I'm going to do that is just so I can see that if the uh, mechanism is actually running without risking it uh, getting a tape all tangled up in there. So let's put the empty shell in first and see what happens. Let's take it in OK. Let's try fast forward. Seems to work. Let's try rewind. Button's a bit stiff, but yeah, it seems to work. Let's try play. Oh, that looked a bit sluggish. Hmm. Of course, it shut down now. The machine's detected the fault and shut down. Hopefully, we can just turn it off and back on again to recover from that. Right, if you try play again. Yeah, lacing's a bit sluggish, isn't it? I wonder if that's just because this lacing belt down here is a bit slack. Yeah, it looks a little bit slack, that. I think that's probably... Yeah, probably a couple of new belts needed there. But it doesn't look as though it's going to... ruin the tape, does it? So, should we try an actual tape? Okay, let's try fast forward first. No, I don't think that's running. It's not. Let's try rewind. No, I'm guessing then the idlers are slipping. So I'm not going to risk pushing play because it may not take the tape back into the cassette and I'm going to end up with a tangle. So let's dig a bit deeper and have a look at the idlers. Take this tape out. Right, now we can see the idler assembly. Idlers are driven by this belt here, so it could simply be that that belt is slipping on the motor. It doesn't look like that's the case though. It looks like the belt is okay. Unless it does start slipping under load, which is possible. Hmm. Anyway, I think next thing I should do is get this pendulum off. 
which involves removing that little circlip, which is a bit of a nightmare. I could do with a slightly smaller screwdriver than this, really. In fact, I think I'll get a slightly smaller screwdriver. This screwdriver is actually slightly damaged, which I think may work in my favour here. I'm just holding my finger on the circlip to try and stop it pinging off into the mechanism. There we go, we're off. Let's try and get that out. Circlip. Hopefully this top portion of the idler should lift off now. Oops, I've dropped it into the mechanism. That's not going to help. Oh, I can see now that does look quite bad actually. So I can fish that out. There we are. I also need to be careful not to lose this little washer here that goes in between there and the shaft. So I'll separate that off. In fact, it looks like there's two washers there. There is, there's two washers at that point. So just bear that in mind when I'm reassembling it. So next I'm going to remove the belt. Without, I don't want to lift that out just yet, I just want to take the belt off at the moment. Yeah, the belt has perished, so that's going to need replacing. Now, can we take this lower? Yeah, take that lower pulley off. No uh, washers in there, but the washers are down here on the spindle. I wonder if I can get away with just leaving them there, actually. That motion feels quite stiff. I think that could probably do with a bit of lubrication. I'll try just lifting it off. Ouch. Yep, it looks like that does lift off. But again, I need to be very careful not to lose those little washers. I'll try and keep them on there, I think. But there are... There is just one washer on there, I think. That doesn't look so bad as the other one. And again, that feels quite stiff to turn, although it's freeing up now I'm running it, but... Yeah. I think new belts and idler tyres might sort this machine out, hopefully. So here's all the bits I've just removed. Top idler, and the little circlip, the original belt, the two little washers. There is actually two washers there, they're just stuck together at the moment. Bottom idler, and the pulley, which looks absolutely filthy. OK, here are the new parts, new belt and two new idler tyres. I've given this pulley a bit of a clean up with the old isopropyl alcohol and uh, I've also cleaned up the mating surfaces in the video recorder as well. So that's the old belt, so we'll get rid of that. So the first thing I'm going to try and do is take this um, perished idler off of here. Or try to anyway. Possibly the tweezers might be the tool to use for this, because I don't mind if I damage this one, obviously, because it's going in the bin anyway. It's hard to get off. There we go. So I, don't, I don't mind ruining this old one, because it's had it anyway. There we are. Put that in the old used bits pile. I haven't damaged the springs, that's good. Can't see much dirt on there, but I will give that... Um, Spindle a little clean. So. No, there's not a lot of dirt on that. That's come quite. That's quite clean. Um, I'll just let that dry while I try and. Uh, oh, don't want to lose the little washers here, do we? Is safe. Well, this one doesn't look as bad, but we'll change it anyway while we're in here. Ah, that's looking good. Yeah, okay, got that off. Oh, 
Let's put that in the rubbish pile. And uh, that actually looks clean. I'm not going to bother to try and clean that. I think I'll just put the new tyre straight on there. One done. Now this is probably dried off sufficiently that I can... That does actually feel quite rough. Hmm. Skeptical about that, but anyway. Easier. The springs are still okay. Whoops. Right. I think we can now go for a reassembly. That's the new belt ready to go in the machine. Right. I believe this bit goes on first. Washer. Belt pulley. Now, new belt. I have cleaned these uh, pulleys up, incidentally, with isopropyl alcohol. Fiddly. Where's my tweezers? There they are. Oh, got it. Washers. And top idler. Now comes the tricky part, getting the circlet back on. Haha, <laughs> this is always fun. Where's that little broken screwdriver? There it is. Ah, got it. I think. Yeah. That was the hardest part for me. Right, now, in fact, since that lacing ring is, uh, lacing ring belt is relatively easy to replace, I think I will replace that one anyway. Um, the one I won't bother to do for the moment is this um, cassette cradle loading uh, belt because it's quite fiddly to change and it was actually loading the cassette okay. So for the time being, I'll leave that one, but I'll change the lacing ring belt just because that's quite easy. Right, I've changed the lacing belt down there and obviously cleaned the, the uh, pulleys up as well. So let's uh, power up the machine. Fast forward. No, it's still not fast forwarding. I wonder if that's because those idlers were just so stiff to move. Rewind's okay. It's a bit laboured. But fast forward doesn't work at all. It is playing though.
and it is taking up correctly so it looks like it's just fast forward that's not working oh no it's not taking the tape back in is it Well, what's it doing now? Hmm, okay, we have a tangle. Oh well, nearly. Okay, I've been having a little bit more of a play with this um, off camera and I think part of the problem, if not the whole problem, is while this top pendulum is quite easy to move, <coughs> it feels quite free, um, the bottom pendulum there with that bottom pulley on it is quite stiff and when I engage either fast forward or um, the, the take up for the unlace, that wheel just isn't quite making it across to the um, ring around the bottom of the reel table. So if I um, fool it into thinking it's got a tape in, I might be able to demonstrate that for you. Oh, it helps you turn it on. I'm just pushing down that little switch there to make it think it's got a tape in, <clears throat> which I'll try and do with that finger so you can see. There we go. So we're in play now. So the top idler is now driving the take-up hub. But when I hit stop, ah, they, just towards the end then it, it picked up. So I think possibly all I need to do, let's let it eject, possibly is just lubricate this action slightly of this bottom idler just to free that up a bit. And then I think it may work. So that involves taking the whole idler assembly off again, which means taking that little circlip off again, which is not fun. But anyway, here we go. It's got to be done. OK, what I've done now is I've had all this whole idler assembly off again. I didn't video that bit because it was, would just have been a bit boring. Um, this top one is still free, nice and loose as it was. This bottom one is now much freer. That feels a lot looser and swings very freely from side to side now, that bottom idler. All I did was, took it all off, and I cleaned up all the old oil and grease and stuff that was on the shaft and on the spindles and in the bushes that go through the various bits that sit on that um, shaft. Then I dropped the bottom idler back on and I could immediately feel it was so much freer. I just didn't think it was worth putting any more lubricant on there because with lubricant on there it's likely to attract muck and dust and dirt and over time it'll go sticky again so I actually decided to just leave it with no lubricant on um, so now let's give it a try and see if that's improved matters hopefully it will have done well given that this tape has already been damaged from earlier tests I'm just gonna go straight for a real tape so let's power up and power on so that tape is actually sitting on a damaged portion, so when I put it in, the first thing I want to do is fast forward to get it off that bit of damaged tape, because I don't really want that going around the tape path. Tape in, fast forward a bit. Oh, that's looking a lot more healthy. Try a bit of rewind. Oh, that was play. Oh well. <laughs> Stop. Yes, it's taking it in. Yay. Right, let's go a bit further forward. Just to make sure I'm well away from that bit of crumpled tape. Play again. Seems happier, doesn't it? Picture rewind. Stop. Yep, it's taking it in. Now let's try full speed rewind. Yeah, looks fine. Right, so I think I've solved it. So, 
just before I finally put the machine back together, I'm wondering whether it's worth changing this belt down here for the loading uh, mechanism. Um, it does look as though it's started to deteriorate slightly, but it's still it's still reasonably springy and looks fairly okay. So I think on balance, given that it's such a fiddly job to change that belt, I'm going to leave it. So let's put the machine back together. Just a little aside, while I was putting this machine back together, I noticed that this board is sitting on top of this plastic pillar here and it's actually causing the board to flex to be it's bent up quite dramatically towards that back corner that doesn't seem right to me oh and that board's loose to move as well that, that doesn't feel right to me at all but oh, I think is that meant to be in a different position Yes, I think that board's got out of position. That's meant to be... Yeah, that's that's meant to be in there, isn't it? Hmm. What's going on with this? I think that's meant to be... That's how it's meant to be. There we go. Locked under there. It's still loose. You'd think that should be fixed somehow along the front there, but it apparently isn't. I'm not sure that's quite right. Anyway, not a serious issue, so we'll leave it as it is for now. That seems a bit odd though, doesn't it? Okay, yeah, you may be wondering why I've got this DVD player set up, and that's simply because I don't have any beta tapes with NTSC recordings on. So what I'm going to have to do is play an NTSC DVD on this player while recording it on the Sanyo. Um, not an ideal test, really because all it's demonstrating is that the machine can play back its own recordings but uh, it's the best I can do because I don't have any other tapes with NTSC recordings on so let's get this NTSC tape playing now if I press record on here which presumably you just get the tape counter going reset it Right, I think that'll do. So let's stop that and stop that. I think that's memory. So if I now go back, that should stop at zero. Which it does. Right, here we go. Moment of truth. Can it play back the recording? Well, yes, but it's rubbish. Try the tracking. Well, kind of works, but it's very poor, isn't it? Maybe the heads need cleaning. Perhaps I should try that next. Yeah, let's try cleaning the heads, see if that helps. OK, I've cleaned the heads and the tape path. Not a lot came off the heads, to be honest, but um, it may have made a difference. I'll try playing back the original recording first to see if that's improved at all. Actually, I think I'd gone back a bit further. Yeah, there we go. No, that hasn't really improved, has it? So let's go back to before that. We'll stop the tape there and reset the counter. Let's get some NTSC going into it. Right, start recording. Right, let's let that run for a couple of minutes. Right, that'll do I think, so let's stop that, and stop that, and we'll rewind, it should stop at zero, which it does, and here we go, second moment of truth.
it's better. It's definitely better, but it's still quite poor. Let's just try twiddling the tracking. I don't think that made any difference last time. No, it doesn't really, does it? In fact, the fact that the tracking control makes absolutely no difference at all is suspicious. I wonder if the tracking pot has failed. Yes, because when I wobble it, we lose the picture completely. I think the tracking pot may have failed in there. That's definitely improved. It's not brilliant. But it is basically working, isn't it? So, okay, I'm going to call that a qualified success, I think. Oh, there we go. That's the end of the recording. Oh, well, there we go. Hope you enjoyed watching that um, semi-successful repair of that uh, Sanyo VTC M05 Japanese Betamax machine, or Beta machine, or Myconic, I probably should call it. Thanks very much for watching.